I'm, I'm constantly catching myself referring to in the U.S. or in Mexico, but that means after the Gadsden Purchase. I'm you know, kind of sensitive to biases in our history books, and that's one of them. Because this, where we're living here, was part of Spain at that time. And we were in northwest New Spain here in Maricopa. And uh, they weren't thinking about, uh, uh, Spain in central Mexico wasn't thinking about going west. They were thinking about going northwest. Okay? <laughs> and so these things collided a little later on. And uh, by 1835, there were a lot more American settlers in Tejas than there were Mexicans. And so the Americans said, we'll, we'll take over here. And they did. And they got into, this, this guy you will hear a lot about today, Santana. Um, I, I, I was going to relook it up because I always forget the number. It's something like 15 or 20 times he was the president of Mexico, separate times. They was in and out, in and out, in and out, sometimes just a few months long. He was involved in that war in Texas and the battle at the Alamo, and, and then shortly after the battle at San Jacinto, uh, where he was grievously wounded. Santana was, he lost his leg. And, um, and the Texans won. And so they started the Republic of Texas in 1835, lasted for just over, a few months over 10 years. So by 1845, they had decided, being former Americans that formed the country of Texas, they then petitioned the United States to take the country of Texas over as a state. So Texas went, this is uh, during the westward expansion, the first state that went straight in as a state without being a territory. And Texas looks kind of like it does now, except for this piece going up here and over in there. And so uh, Texas is freshly a state of the United States now. And uh, there was a, a, a dispute still between the Republic of Texas and Mexico, now the state of Texas in the United States and Mexico about exactly where the southern border of Texas was. We know it now to be right down uh, the Rio Grande. But Mexico thought that the, there's another little river down in southern Texas there, the Nueces. They thought the Nueces was where it should be. So there's this narrow strip of land between the Nueces and the Rio Grande that was somewhat under dispute. And President Polk, who was very much a manifest destiny go west person, thought maybe at least some historians accuse him of thinking <laughs> that this was his opportunity to go see if uh, he could clear this thing up about Nueces or Rio Grande. And in the process, some American troops were killed by Mexican troops. And that was enough. So President Pope declares war, and uh, it was off and running. So, uh, that leads up to the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in a town near Mexico City called La Villa de Guadalupe in 1848. And um, we signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Big problem. That treaty referred to where the border was going to be. And it referred to the location of El Paso, uh, which was not. El Paso, Texas. It was El Paso, Chihuahua. The uh, gold rush was actually announced to Americans in December 1848 um, in the State of the Union address, which in those years was not an address. It was written a State of the Union report. And it was in December, not January, back in those days. So uh, it was announced that gold had been discovered and set off quite a stir. The Mexican surveyors and the American surveyors and commissioners met, and they pulled out Bistronel's map, and they read the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, and this is when the dispute came up. 
And they said, oops, something is wrong. So the American interpretation put uh, the, the border at eight miles north of El Paso. That's specifically referred to in the treaty. Uh, but uh, Condé wanted it to be eight, eight miles north of the latitude and longitude that the erroneous map showed it, which would put it on a line like this, and then over a certain distance and then up to the Gila River. And, uh, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo specifically says that both the commissioner and the surveyor on both sides must sign, attesting to the surveyed line. And he says, I'm not signing it. They had artists on these commissions because they didn't have... Uh, it, you know, it would have been nice if they had a little uh, iPhone <laughs> with a GPS on it, but they were using different instruments then. So they did a lot, and, and mostly of what you're going to see tonight is the pictures that they drew, because that's the fun part, is what all did they document and record. See this road here? Mm -hmm. It goes in between these rocks here and Signal Peak there. Look. This is the exact same spot where that picture, where that, where that, that wagon is, is where the roadside rest area is. On the Mexican side, it's still there. You can go take a picture of it and it looks like that still. So that's kind of fun. And uh, this building here is where the commissioner's headquarters were in El Paso. It's up near where the line would be, the erroneous too far north line. So they moved their camp there. And that's when they drew this picture. And they're still trying to figure out what to do. And uh, so here's uh, the map that shows both lines. The one agreed to by Bartlett and Condé here, and the one uh, uh, prepared by Mr. Gray. It's either eight miles north of here, or it's eight miles north of here. But that's a big land, uh, strip of land through southern, what's currently southern New Mexico. At this point, uh, Bartlett uh, at the mines in Silver City, which is not too far from here, said, uh, we're running low on supplies. And there weren't a lot of supplies available in El Paso, so they decided to go down and to take a side trip down into Sonora to find some towns where they could buy some food and other supplies they needed for their group. So at this point, they traveled through Guadalupe Pass, which is the 49ers had come through, and it is... Uh, using modern day maps, it's where New Mexico, Arizona, and Sonora come together, about 20 or 30 miles east of Douglas, Arizona. Uh, they followed what is the current border from Douglas to Naco and Bisbee and the San Pedro River, which they crossed, just a mile south of the Huachuca Mountains, south of Sierra Vista into Mexico, into what is now Mexico. It was all Mexico at the time, okay? And then they hit the down-flowing Santa Cruz River. Now, the picture was drawn a few years later, but looking at the village of Santa Cruz, and you see these lines of trees? Those trees are still there. They're quince trees of San Lazaro, which also has peaches. And the 49ers picked a lot of peaches there. Those trees right there in the picture, right in here. Uh, would have been the trees they got. So this is his field sketch in Tucson, um, and this is uh, his finished uh, pencil and sepia wash drawing of the same thing. Um, in this one here, he added himself right here as an artist drawing the picture. <laughs> okay? What was that building? At? That building was the convento in Tucson, and that was... Uh, the and then they start, then they decide they're going to have to get back to El Paso and they come through this country all the way uh, across Southern California, across Colorado, up the Gila, through Maricopa, and on to El Paso. And so that's what this series of pictures starts. This is one of their camps, the second camp out from Fort Yuma in June of 52. And that is the Gila River there, flowing pretty nicely at its end. And then a, a camp at a small lagoon on the Gila. Those lagoons still exist without water most of the time. But they're, they're little curves back in where the cliffs are and then they're full of trees and sometimes a little puddle of water in there. 
They're very interesting places to go hiking. And here is the one of Maricopa from the Australia Mountains. So uh, here, here's where he just went up on the mountain right over there and then looked down at, uh, what do you call it, Maricopa Butte? Is that what you call it? Pima Butte. Pima Butte. Okay. And then the Santa Cruz River flows parallel to the Gila River for another five or six miles, one mile apart. And they run together finally up here at Kumaki, just before you get up to Levi. Okay? If I'm trying to orient you to towns that you know about now. But there's that same idea he had as an artist of get up on the hill and do a picture. It's an aerial photograph of the day, so to speak. <laughs> right? Cool. I love it. And see, this was one of his artists that was with him. And now, this is the opposite view. So, there, see, the, see the little huts down here? Mm -hmm. And this is Australia Mountains. The next picture is from the huts looking up at the Australias. Okay? So, it's two, two pictures looking this way and that way. So, that's about four or five miles from the library here. Wow. That? Yes. Wow. Important place in history. Everybody a, went through here. Gin? No, it's the Gila River oh, the Indian community. Oh, the other way. Okay. We're talking north towards Phoenix a little bit. From here. Some other pictures along the uh, Gila. This is over uh, west of Gila Bend. And some Mexicans from New Mexico had moved south of that line and established this town to stay in Mexico. Uh, and so Angel Tria sent some troops up to try to show some muscle that, yes, this is still Mexico. And the governor of New Mexico got some volunteers together, and he sent troops down, and they're like looking at each other and pointing guns at each other. And word gets back to the president. Now we're going to have another shooting war over the border again. Okay? And he didn't want that to happen. That's what led, this is what led to the Gadsden Purchase. So President Pierce takes office, I think, in April of 1853 and sends Gadsden immediately to negotiate in Mexico City with Santana, who is now uh, the president of Mexico again for about the 20th time since he had <laughs> in the past 20 years or so. Okay. Well, he, you know, the, a lot of the Mexican presidents do not have a great record about their, uh, well, let's put it this way. There was a lot of corruption. And uh, um, some people think that it still goes on. Uh, so Gadsden says, well, we want this strip of land through southern New Mexico and southern Arizona, up to the Gila River in Arizona. And we'll offer you 15 million bucks for it. And Santana says, okay. <laughs> Sign it. And then, uh, I don't know if there's good records in Mexico what happened to the money. But of course, things don't always go according to plan because the uh, Senate gets involved. U.S. Senate. So the price dropped from 15 million to 10 million. Now, Santana signed the document that said 15 million. So he wasn't too happy with that. But apparently he needed the money. Um, Emory began surveying the new border with the Gadsden Purchase in hand and does a lot of scientific and ethnographic observations and drawings. And Ar uh, uh, Arthur Schott was one of his main artists who did color lithographs of the Indians <laughs> and steel engravings of the border scenes. And I'll show those to you now. So instead of the... Conde Bartlett line, which was up here, above Mesilla, they took it back down to eight miles above El Paso, where El Paso really is, not where the map mistakenly said it was. Okay? And then, in the Gadsden Treaty, they came up, and this is what I don't know why, but they came up with 100 miles, a certain mile south, and over to this coordinate, then it turns and goes straight to 
to uh, Yuma. That stuff is spelled out in the Gadsden Treaty, apparently with enough clarity and precision that the two surveyors didn't have any disputes about figuring this out. So originally, uh, Gadsden had this line in mind, and there was plenty of talk about bringing it down here south of Wymus, because south of Wymus in Sonora, uh, Wymus is a nice harbor. And so if, if they had done that and it had gone this way, then we would have gotten this harbor off of the Gulf of California. Uh, but there were the northerners in the Congress were against it because they were afraid that that would be a major seaport bringing commerce in and this is south and that the southern states would try to turn New Mexico and Arizona into slave states and alter the level of balance between slave and not slave. So there's railroads, there's seaports, there's uh, north and south slavery issues all embedded in these negotiations. So that dark area right there is the disputed area. This was the original disputed area right here. And then the Gadsden Purchase added all of that. And it added all of that so that we could do a railroad route to California easily. They're over at Yuma. No problems about where the border is there. They figured that out. They came along here. This is uh, right here. Uh, the valley along the Gila and the Sierra de las Estrellas from the Maricopa Wells. And uh, then they went down to Nogales where that 111 uh, longitude line is. And this is, there was no one living in Nogales then. It was just a pass. And uh, that was referred to as Los Nogales because of these trees here, which were walnut trees. Where they did the Pima Villages picture earlier. See, here they are. Mm -hmm. See them right there? Oh, yes. And this is up on the Estrellas looking down. They just didn't get Pima Butte in this drawing, but it's from the same place. And turned it into a nice oil painting on canvas. Um, and then they did their scientific study, colored ink printing. Okay, so the, the, he made field drawings and then back in Washington did the stone stuff. So there's Pimo women wearing costumes that are pretty much not so, so much influenced by Americans, Mexicans, or Spanish. They're wearing the cotton skirts that they made for many years. And then the Arenaños, which is over closer to um, the Colorado River, and the Yumas, now known as Quechan. Stop with one of its stations in Maricopa Wells, right here, and this is one of their earlier advertisements. So the first stage coach from Texas to California was this, uh, the year before the Butterfield. And Gerald Honert, who's speaking next month, will probably mention this. He's a Butterfield guy, okay? But I keep poking him about the San Antonio, San Diego was here a year earlier, and he's recently done some more research on that, so I imagine he'll tell you a little more about it. 